So when I talk about Newton's first law problem solving, what I mean is problem solving in the special situation when acceleration is zero. Um, and in that case, the net force in all directions will also be zero. So all the forces will balance. Um, so those are situations of either constant speed. So you can be moving just as long as you have like a constant velocity or you're at rest. And the two cases we're gonna do here are both at rest. So here's our situation. We have little Miss Sunshine. She's standing on a ramp. Um, when you draw your ramp, um, draw it, try it, try and make a nice sort of shallow ramp. So something kind of like, oh, that marker is dying here. Try a different one. Something kind of like this. And try not to make it too steep. Um, if you make it like 45 degrees, it's just harder to see um, where all your angles are. Okay, so this ramp is at 15 degrees. So this is a 15.0 degree angle in there. And we have little Miss Sunshine standing here on the ramp. There she is. Maybe she's got a little smiley face. All right. She has a mass of 50 kilograms and we wanna draw her free body diagram, which means we wanna draw all the forces she feels. So she would feel a force of gravity. Gravity is always straight down. So that is the force of gravity she feels. FG. She also feels a normal force. That's the reason why she doesn't fall through the hill is because there's a normal force here. Mm, running out of space here. Don't like that. That's FN. And the reason why she doesn't slide down the hill is there's a static friction force. So because she's still, she's not moving anywhere. This is a static friction force. It's not a, it's not a kinetic friction because she's not sliding. And that what is what holds her on the hill. So FFS is her static friction force there. Our job here is to calculate all of the forces that she um, she experiences. So a first, sort of a good move to begin with, if you can, is just calculate gravity. Um, and we can in this case. So if you know the, the object's mass, then you can usually calculate gravity. So um, the force of gravity on the surface of the Earth, anyway, is just mass times g. Uh, plugging in those numbers, it's going to be her mass of 50 kilograms times g is 9.8. Um, don't get confused with kinematics. That's not negative 9.8, right? The force of gravity, the sign of the force of gravity comes from your free body diagram, um, not from uh, the sign of G. G is positive 9.8 here. So we'll get sort of the sign of things in our free body diagram. Uh, so 50 times 9.8, sorry, 50 times 9.8 gives me 490. Newtons, and in terms of sig figs, that's actually great. I have three sig figs everywhere, so I can keep it like that. So I found my first force. All right, now working on my free body diagram, um, I really need a coordinate system here. Um, I could do your simple coordinate system, which is x is positive this way, and y is positive up. But that really wouldn't be ideal, and that's because we're on a ramp here. Anytime you're on a ramp, it's gonna be a lot easier to make your coordinate system parallel to the ramp. So I'm gonna make x positive up the hill and y positive 90 degrees to the hill, so perpendicular to the hill. Which means that I, in when I'm splitting up any force that's not parallel to x and y, Fn and FFS are actually already good, right? Fn is parallel to y, because that's 90 degrees to the hill. By definition, the normal force is always 90 degrees to your surface. And the friction force is parallel to the surface, and that's also by definition, the friction force always goes parallel to surfaces. So the only force I have to split up into components then is Fg. So I have to make one component that's 90 degrees to my hill here, and one component which is parallel to my hill. So this is Fgy, right? And that's in the y direction. And this one is Fgx. So Fgx is parallel to the hill and those two should be 90 degrees to each other there. Okay, then we have to start calculating some stuff here. Um, if this is 15 degrees in here, then this in here, this is a, a 90 degree angle here. So this is a little triangle. All the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So if this one is 15 degrees, um, then this guy in here is going to have to be 75 degrees in order to add up 15 plus 75 plus 90 to add up to the 180 degrees there. Then this is a right angle right here. So this angle in here, this full thing is 90, 
So 75 plus something in here has to add up to 90. That something must be the 15 degrees. And there we've got it. So we've got a little angle in our triangle. That's really nice. That's helpful for calculating FGY and FGX. Let's do FGY first. That's going to be negative, right? Because Y is positive up times the force of gravity times the uh, cos of 15, right? Because cos is close. So it's close to my angle here. So that'll be negative my 490 uh, times cos of 15, which is going to be 490 times cos of 15. That'll be negative 473 newtons. FGX here is also negative. It's going down the hill. Um, so it's going to be negative FG or my MG. It's another way I could just write in the equation for it. Uh, times sine of 15 degrees because it's opposite my 15 degree angle there. If I want to calculate a number for that, it would be the 490 times sine of 15. That gives me negative 127 newtons for that. Cool. All right. Um, so that's my, my first step is always to find a force if I can. If I know the force of gravity, that's just great to calculate that. Um, if you don't know it, that's fine. Um, you can keep going. You just use variables and that's totally okay too. Um, then your next job is to split everything into components that's not parallel to x and y. So that was just fgy and fgx for us in this case. The next thing we have to do is sum up all the forces in x and sum up all the forces in y, set the sum of the forces in x equal to zero, set the sum of the forces in y equal to zero. So I'll start with x. So x direction stuff here. So in the x direction, there is the friction force. So the sum of the forces in x includes the friction force and fgx. So this has a x component, that is all in x. The normal force has no x component to it at all. So that's all of them. And then I can write because the acceleration is equal to zero in the x direction, that's true in both directions, but because the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, the net force in the x direction will also equal to zero. So I can say zero equals my FFS plus my FGX. Just rearranging for the only one I don't know yet, which is the friction force. I'll move the FGX to the other side, and I get that um, FFS is negative FGX. And I, this lets me actually solve for the friction force. I can plug in my numbers. FFS is going to be negative of the FGX that I just found, which was negative 127. So negative of negative 127, that's positive 127 newtons. And that makes sense in my picture, right? My friction force should be positive because it's pointed up the hill and I set up the hill as the positive direction. So, so far I know two forces. I know the force of gravity and I know my friction force. So F, Fs is positive 127 newtons, pulling us up the hill there. Good. Next, I'm going to look at the y direction stuff. So in the y direction, I'll sum up my forces in y. There is the normal force and there's the y component of gravity and no component of friction is in y, so I don't need to write that one in. Now, Little Miss Sunshine is standing still, so because her acceleration in the y direction is zero, the net force in the y direction is also zero. So that means I can say zero is equal to the normal force plus uh, FGY. Rearranging that, I can put FGY on the other side and I get normal force is the negative of FGY. And I actually already calculated FGY is negative 473. So the normal force is negative, negative 473, which is positive, which is what I expect, 473 newtons for the normal force. So I can add that. Fn is 473 newtons, and I have three sig figs everywhere, which is what I want, and we're all done. Okay, let's do a trickier one. So in this problem, we're actually going to try and go all the way through using uh, just variables and not calculating too many things. Um, you'll see why that's important sort of as we go. 
All right, so this problem is about a rock climber. Uh, she's 90 kilograms and she's hanging from rope two, as you can see here. Um, rope one and two are both really strong. So those are not gonna snap pretty much no matter what. Um, rope three though can only support 1500 newtons before it breaks. So rope one and two are basically her main ropes. Rope three is not essential to her survival. If it snaps, it, she'll just swing out, but that's kind of annoying. So what we're gonna try and find is what's the minimum angle theta that is allowed here before there's just too much tension on rope three and it breaks. So part A starts out pretty straightforward. So part A, I'm just looking for a free body diagram of the climber. Um, I'll just draw her as a dot here. Um, she has two forces. So she feels her own force of gravity. Um, we'll make the y direction positive up and she feels a tension force in the upwards direction. It's an FT, and I'm going to call it FT2, and that's because it's in rope 2 here. So there's three different tension forces, so we're going to have to keep track of them with FT1, FT2, and FT3. Um, figuring out what these forces is is actually very straightforward. So FG is her force of gravity. That's going to be negative, because it's Y is positive up, mass times G. Um, I can actually sum up all the forces in the y direction to figure out FT2. So there's FT2 is one force and FG is the other force. So just notice as I'm writing down the sum of the forces, I put in every force as like positively, I'm just adding them all up. When I plug in what FG is, which is negative MG, that's where the negative sign sl slips in there. So um, I'll plug that in next. So it's negative mg. So fg is negative mg. You don't want to put like a negative in front of fg, right? Because then you'll get a double negative here. And then you end up with a positive, which is not true. So when you're adding up all the forces, you just say like plus fg, knowing that fg itself is negative. So when you plug it in, it'll be negative here. Um, mass is of course positive and g, this uh, constant 9.8 is a positive constant. So that's not gonna be a double negative here. G is positive 9.8. It's so a little bit different from kinematics. In kinematics, G was still positive 9.8, but often we put in like the acceleration due to gravity as a negative 9.8 because of our coordinate system. When we're using G in general, it's the, num it's the positive number 9.8. So we put that in as a positive. Okay, that was just a little aside. All right, we keep going um, so we can solve for FT2. Uh, we know that the acceleration on the climber is zero. She's not even moving, so she's definitely not accelerating. So therefore, the sum of the forces in the y direction will also be zero. So I can say zero is FT2 minus mg. I'll move the mg to the other side, and that gives me FT2. So what I have is a nice equation for FT2, which is positive mg. Um, and just for fun, we'll calculate both of these. So FG is negative M times G, so that's negative 90 kilograms times the constant 9.8. So 90 times 9.8 is 882, so negative 882 newtons. But we're gonna uh, use our sig figs, right? So that rounds off to 8.8 times 10 to the two newtons for FG. And for FT2, it'll just be positive 8.8 .8 times 10 to the two newtons, right? Because FT2 is positive MG. That is part A. All right, here's where it gets a little bit trickier. Part B, we're gonna do a free body diagram of the knot right here. So all the forces on that knot. And then we're gonna create an equation for the tension in rope three, FT3, in terms of this angle theta. And then our final goal in part C is gonna to be to figure out what that theta is at the moment when rope three snaps. So first, our free body diagram of the knot. So here's the knot. Um, it feels a force from rope three. So draw that one. This is FT3. That's the force we're gonna make an equation for. It feels FT2. So this is a really nice thing about tension. In part A, we calculated FT2 on the climber, right? That's an upwards force that the climber feels. That is the same as the tension that is downwards on the knot in that same rope. So within a rope, tension is constant. So the FT2 that pulls the climber up is the same value as the FT2 that pulls the rope down. Only difference is that, of course, the FT2 pulling on the 
the naught here is going to be pulling down, so it'll be negative, but it's exactly the same value. Um, it's just going to be, instead of positive mg, it'll be negative mg on the naught. And then there's ft1 here. Right there. Uh, we need a coordinate system, so I'll just draw that over here. So y is positive up, and x is positive over here. Your next move is always going to be to figure out the components um, in the x and y direction. So this ft1 has components in x and in y. Uh, that's our very important angle theta in here. That's what we're going to be trying to solve for in the end. Um, so this here is ft1 in the x direction, and this is ft1 in the y direction here. Uh, make sure those guys have arrows on them so you can see ft1 is backwards, ft1 is, uh, ft1 y is up, ft1 x is backwards. Okay, let's make equations for both of them. Um, so ft1 x is going to be negative. So I'll put a negative sign out front. That's because it's backwards. Um, it'll be the value of ft1. So this is going to be a positive number. ft1 doesn't have like a negative or positive sign because it's not pointing parallel to x or y. So I can't sort of simplify it like that. So it's just going to be positive. So negative won't be like a negative negative. You won't get a double negative there. That's a positive value. And ft1x is close to the angle theta here. So in terms of my Sakatoa, I'm going to use cos because cos is close. So cos of theta. So the hypotenuse times cos of theta. Um, ft1y is positive because ft1y is up. Um, so it's going to be positive ft1 times its opposite my angle, sine of theta. All right. So I have drawn my free body diagram. I have split anything that was not already parallel to x and y into components parallel to x and y. Those are sort of my first two things to always do in one of these problems. The next move is always to sum up forces in x, sum up forces in y. So I'm going to start with x over here. And I'm going to sum up all the forces in the x direction. So ft3 is in the x direction. And the other force in the x direction is that ft1x. So remember when I'm summing forces, I just add them all together. So this is a positive, right? I'm just adding them all together. When I fill in what they are, that's where you see the negative sign. So ft3, this guy is negative. So that's where you'll see when I fill in what it is. So I'm replacing ft1x with the negative ft1 cos theta. That's what it is. That's where the negative sign comes in. Okay, so we know the acceleration in the x direction is zero. That's because the knot is not uh, moving at all, so it's definitely not accelerating. So therefore, the net force in x must be zero. So I can say zero is equal to ft3 minus ft1 cos theta. I'll just simplify this a bit by moving this whole term to the other side. So I get ft1 cos theta is equal to ft3. Um, this sounds like kind of what I want, right? I want an equation for ft3 in terms of theta. The problem is, it's I've got another variable in there that I don't want, which is this ft1. So I know that this the tension force in rope 3 is going to be, whatever the tension in rope 1 is, multiplied by cos theta. But it would be awfully nice if I could somehow eliminate ft1, because I don't know what it is. So we'll pause over here. So I've kind of got a temporary equation here, but it's not really solidified yet. So I'm going to go over to the x or the y direction and do the same thing. So whenever you kind of get stuck with one side, just go to the other side, try um, summing up forces in y and see where you get. So in the y direction, what have I got? I have ft2. And the other y direction force I have is ft1y. All right, I'll fill in what those actually are. So this is where negatives and positives come in, like in terms of the sign. Ft2 is, is a negative one, right? It's down, so it'll be negative, and it's negative mg is its value. Ft1y is positive, and we calculated it up here. It's Ft1 sine theta. So I'll put in Ft1 sine theta to replace my Ft1y. Same as on the x direction, I know the acceleration in the y direction is zero, and therefore the net force in y is zero, that knot is not accelerating, all the forces should balance. 
So I can say zero is equal to negative mg plus f t1 sine theta. I'll clean it up a bit by moving mg to this side is f t1 sine theta. Then I'm just going to create an equation here for f t1. So to do that, I'm going to divide both sides by sine theta. So that cancels out the sine theta here. And I get that f t1 on its own is equal to mg divided by sine theta. Now, I'm not asked to make an equation for ft1, but that turns out to be a really useful move. And the reason, this is also the reason why I made this one purple, um, is that you can now take ft1 here, your equation for ft1 that you used summing up forces in y to create, and actually sneak it in here to replace ft1, and then we'll have a nice equation for ft3 that does not involve ft1 anymore. So that will change my equation for ft3 to be, instead of ft1 here, I get to write what ft1 actually is, which is mg divided by sine theta, and then times the cos theta. I'm just going to write this a little bit prettier. I'll have ft3 is mg, and I'm going to write the cos theta and the sine theta kind of together. So cos theta over the sine theta, right? That sine theta is just on the bottom, so you can kind of write it under any or all of the bottom. Um, that is my nice equation for ft3, so that is part b. All right, part c. So in part c, I'm trying to uh, determine what is the smallest angle theta um, in order for the rope to break. So like, how far can I go before that rope will break? I'm gonna start from where I left off, that ft3 is mg, uh, sorry, cos theta, divided by sine theta. I'm trying to solve for theta here. I actually know mass, I know g is just 9.8, and I even know the force in rope three, ft3, at the moment when the rope breaks. So I know everything except for one variable, so I can absolutely solve this equation. The problem is that there's theta in two different places, so it's awkward to solve. Fortunately, there's a really nice trig identity. Um, when you take grade 11 math, you'll learn this one if you've taken it already or have gotten to that point in grade 11 math, you've already met it. Uh, it's a really lovely, simple trig identity. Tan theta is sine theta divided by cos theta. So if you ever see a sine theta over cos theta, you can actually just replace it with a single tan theta. So it's a really handy identity, it has a really cute little proof I can show you sometime if you're curious. Um, which means all I need to do is rearrange this equation until I have a sine theta over a cos theta, and then I could replace it with a tan theta. So I'm going to do a little bit of massaging this equation here. Let's divide both sides by mg. That cancels my mg there. So now I have f t3 divided by mg is the cos theta over the sine theta. And then there's a nice sort of fraction-y thing you can do where if you flip one side of the fraction, you can also flip the other side of the fraction and it will still all be true. As long as you just have a single fraction on this side and a single fraction on that side, you can flip everything. So this side will be sine theta over cos theta. That's the thing that I want. And this side will be mg divided by ft3. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So the sine theta over cos theta is a tan theta. So I have mg over f t3 equals that whole sine theta over cos theta. I'm just going to replace with what it is, which is tan theta. So that equals tan theta on that side. I am almost done now, so I, I'll just write this forward. Tan theta equals mg over f t3, and then theta, I can undo a tan function with an inverse tan of mg over f t3. Now we just get to plug in our numbers. So inverse tan of mass is 90 kilograms, G is 9.8, uh, FT3 is 1500 newtons. And we'll plug all those numbers in to get out that theta. So 90 times 9.8 divided by 1500, and then inverse tan that, and we get 30.4, we can actually only keep uh, two sig figs, so I'm gonna have to round this off to just 30 
degrees. So as long as that angle is bigger than 30 degrees, that rope won't snap. Once it goes 30 degrees or smaller, um, the rope is going to snap and the climber will swing out.